Hey, we are in Bangkok, just got off the plane, just got out of a taxi. This is the hotel we're staying in, the Dusit D2 Samyang or something, looks nice from the outside, let's have a look. Sorry, Let's have a look at the room. Oh, nice. This is a real special room. It's beautiful. It's really, really gorgeous. But this hotel is not very old. We've got our own showers. That shower, his and hers showers, I guess that is, maybe. Oh, we wanted to toilet, okay, maybe not then. Amazing, beautiful. That's our view of Bangkok. Stunning, stunning. Beautiful little room. New hotel, it's not even a year old, year old. it still smells fresh. Gorgeous. What kind of cool is this? Welcome, Mr. Matthew Webley. <laughs> well, let's have a look at the gym while we're here. See if it's any good. I can't get in, I've got no card. Got dumbbells, you got a bench, got a little bit of cardio stuff. Yeah, it's all right, that'll do me, nice for you. Right, let's have a look this way. Out there. That looks like the bar. And then this is the pool, I guess. Nice. Nice. Beautiful view. It's just turning evening here in Bangkok. This is the pool. So this elevator looks new, but listen to it. Feels like the Titanic. It's kind of wobbling. Floor 19. That was me wobbling the camera. It doesn't Floor feel 19. safe. Luckily, it is German. So look at this. Sticky rice, chicken, delivered by Grab to the room. We're just chilling tonight. So here I am in the pool swimming pool of this Bangkok hotel I'm staying in. Uh, I don't know why they've designed it this way, but essentially it's like, I don't know, half past 10 in the morning, 11, something like that. And the sun is already being hidden behind that thing over there. Um, so it's like south facing, I think is that way. And this is north facing. So I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know if they expected people to not get sun or what but slight floor in an otherwise absolutely gorgeous spotless amazing brand new hotel absolutely stunning hotel just this pool i don't know they could do a second pool right on the roof or something i don't know because they put it the wrong way so we've decided to get in a tuk tuk a random tuk tuk ask him how much for an hour he said 500 bar. Oh, he said 700 bar. At first, but he, he, we dealt on 500 bar, and now we're just driving around Bangkok for an hour. In the tuk tuk. Bangkok tour. Yeah. Oh. 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 Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, yes. Now it's all good. Okay, it's fine. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, we're, just, we're all right. We're just...
need a chiropractor after an hour in this bad boy. Tiny bit commissioned for taking you to a suit shop, so that's where we're gonna go now. We're gonna go walking out, it almost died. Um, it's reversing it, so we're gonna to suit shop. <laughs> we're gonna to suit shop so you can get your stuff pennies while well, we get hassled by suit shop people. Nightmare, but we're doing it for him, it's like charitable. Do you know what I mean? So here we go. Suit shot. Oh, nice. So, yeah, we went in the stamp. I don't know if you saw that. Um, so, we went in We went in the suit shop, um, and the Indian man in there was very aggressive with us. He was like, What are you here for? What are you here for? And we were like, Tuk Tuk stamp. And he's like, well, he only gets he only gets a stamp if you buy. All right, well, we'll leave then because he was so nasty to us. So, yeah, I knew it was coming as well. It's just one of those things. But he was obsessed with taking us to a boat. Looks like we've come to a boat, and it's a free shuttle boat to the mall. It's not the one he wanted to take us to. Yeah, I think it's free. Is it not free? Maybe it's not free. They said it was free, but maybe it's not. We'll see. So it wasn't a free shuttle boat, but it's only. Thank you, thank you. So, but it was only six bar. He's waving us. It was only six bar, so each. So it might as well be free. What's that all? Fifteen p or something. Something crazy and cheap. But yeah, we're gonna get. I think that's where we're going. We've been before, but going on this boat. At least it's air con. Did you give him the ticket? Yeah. What? What? 15p with a side of seasickness. Yeah, 15p with a side of seasickness. Nice. At least it's air con. They're so gonna fill this up before we go. <laughs> you can't see it or feel it, but it's like, like this. Probably can feel it now. I had somebody moan about one of my vlogs moving too much. So we're going to that building just there. I can see Am. You can see an Apple logo, maybe. There, yeah, look. See the Apple logo? It's just a bit behind there. Apple logo. But look at this massive long boat we've got going around. Essentially, the biggest, longest boat in the world. It's kind of blocking our way. Yeah, that sucks. I got sea legs. We're only on there, what, 10, 15 minutes? <laughs> well, it feels like it. everyone's moving funny. Unless this is a. Is this moving? All oh, right, okay. I don't know. I hope so, because I am. The world is moving. Let's hope this is moving, because I feel like I am. But. Right So it's very luxurious in this place. Look, particularly we got Rolex right here. It's just very, very, that's a famous luxury um, luggage brand. Vulgari. Very nice, say that. Cartier. Oh, it's all the posh brands that I'd never buy in a million years. Prada, Endy. Ooh. Absolutely stunning shopping centre. It's immaculately clean. 
gorgeous. So cool. I love it. I love it. Oh, I love it so much. Hey, gee. They're so cool, aren't they? How good's that? Suitcase as well. Yeah, it's a suitcase, I think. <laughs> well, it must be an actual suitcase because it was it's a girls, weren't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much is 29,000 baht? Um, a lot. Yeah. How much? Right, talk to me. Talk to me. How long does the battery last? Just 10 kilometers. 10 kilometers? <laughs> and, um, but this one, this bike is can, it, for check in early, cannot carry on. Can't what? Uh, it's for check in early. Check, check in, in only. Check in big. Right. Another two can carry on. Oh, they're carry on. This is check in only. Okay, yeah. okay. Wow. What weight, is, What? how much does it weigh? Uh, this is weight, 8 kilograms. Eight kilograms, so can carry, uh, can carry 100 and 10 kilograms. And how much do they weigh? Uh, this one, uh, 29,900. No, no, how much weigh? weigh? Oh, how much weigh? Uh, how much that, do they weigh? This one, eight kilograms. Oh, no. Eight kilograms? Yes. They both weigh the same? Yes. Same battery in? Same, same battery in? Same battery. Oh. This is bigger, so you can fit more stuff. Oh, you should sell them all. Wow. <laughs> this one, <laughs> do the thing. You see that? Oh my days. Oh. <laughs> That's G in it. You're writing I can see I'm in the falling water. So G. So supposedly this is whoop, Korea's. Oh, I don't know where it said it now. Whole chicken. What's that? Whole chicken. Korea's number one chicken or something like that. We shall see. So they just bring us this. I don't know if it's to do your fingers or if it's to drink. I think it's for your fingers. I think it's finger water. Is it for fingers or what? <laughs> are you sure? How sure are you? Down it then. Sharp it, sharp it. Sharp, 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 sharp. Shot it then. If you're sure. <laughs> are you going to drink it? Yeah. You'll love it. I don't know what I want. <laughs> well, that's quite a pile of chicken. We'll see what it's like, eh? Hey? Do you think we got too much chicken? No. Yeah, we got too much chicken, but. 
Hey, yeah, we waited long enough. I'm hungry enough for it. That was hard going. So check this out, Maserati dealership in the mall and a Porsche dealership over there in the mall with cars in there. And then Ollie just went, oh wow. I don't even know what these things are, but she said, oh wow. So that's it, we went in and it was light. Now we come out and it's dark. And you've got the Bangkok skyline off in the distance. So we just walked up to a tuk-tuk driver, um, asked him how much to Khao San Road. He's like 500, I went, oh no. And then he went 400. I'm like, no, no, no. Anyway, I walked away. This guy, 300. And then I said 250, he said, yeah, so half price. Boom, yeah, can do. Let's get in. See, this is much better. This is a better tuk-tuk. Way better. But I can sit normal. Brakes. I think I don't know if it's, no, it's not the brakes, it's just crazy lights. We're here at uh, Khao San Road, or we will be in a second. It's a fucking dump. I hate it. I hate it so much. It's fucking awful. But no vlog would be complete without a walk down Khao San Road. Maybe we'll buy a few bits. Maybe I'll have a cocktail or two. Holly might even have a mocktail if she's looking to get the a la shits. Um, but yeah, I'll film a little bit of it. You won't be able to hear me though, because it's just a fucking nightmare. It's a nightmare how on earth. Backpacker heaven, party people kind of like it that way on, but it's a total, absolute mess. So this is as tame as I've ever seen Khao San Road, so it must be still pretty early. I don't know what time it is, but it, it must be early, because you'll see it in a bit. I mean, it's really tame. Barely anyone here, no music playing loud, but it'll get bad. So we've decided to have a foot massage on Khao San Road, with the craziness just starting to warm up, starting to get going. How's it feel? All right. Look at this pair of nuts. She's just been laughing like crazy at pulling all these toes. Like this is half the problem with Cars on Road. Nice music coming from there, acoustic, and now this DJ's there. Can you hear it all playing? It's like mashing up together. Yay, yeah, she's gonna do the other foot now. Ouch. She's strong this one. So we just had a second massage. I don't know if you can hear me. It was a good one. We've come out to this chaos. There's Khao San Road.
Começa pra ela. Ah, não, você vai. Gorgeous pool area, <laughs> but designed it the wrong way. The sun, not that you can see the sun because it's a cloudy day, it's bloody been red hot the whole time we've been here, our last day, and it's cloudy. But the sun is probably already dipped behind that thing, so it's like that lip stopping the sun there, the tree stopping it there, and I think south is, I don't know, over there somewhere, so this is not south facing, so. It's a beautiful pool, beautiful area, but they've designed it wrong for the sunshine, seekers. Maybe Asian people that don't care about the sun so much might not care, but us Westerners love a bit of sun. Right, I thought I'd do a bit of a Thailand Q&A since we're coming home tomorrow, and yeah, I'm not gonna do anything super exciting on the vlog beyond what I've already done. Although we might do, but I might not capture it on camera because I might just live it. Anyway, Holly's wrote seven questions for me to answer about Thailand to give you a little bit of context, content, whatever. So let's talk about Thailand. Ask me my first question. I don't know what these questions are going to be, by the way. So ask it nice and loud so it can pick you up on camera. Okay. Um, is the food safe to eat here? Is the food safe to hit, eat here? So we 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 got asked by a German couple, lovely German couple we met uh, yesterday by the pool. Um, they said, "Have you had like um, a funny belly?" A funny belly. Um, and we're like, "No!" Like this is our third time in Thailand. We've had all kinds of street food, stuff cooked in pots and pans that don't look like they've ever been washed before. No running water facilities. No hand wash. Like. We've had so much food here, like we, we eat out every meal. We don't, we do occasionally go to some restaurants, but, but like typically street food, which is just cooked at the side of the road, is what we eat when we're over it. It's super cheap, super tasty. And honestly, touch wood, because I don't want to get ill before tomorrow. <laughs> that would be bad. But touch wood, never any, I was going to call it what I usually call it, but I'm going to try and be less inappropriate on this YouTube channel because I feel like I've been a bit inappropriate. But we never got any bad belly. I'm going to call it bad belly. Uh, so hopefully, touch wood, you don't. We do hear of people doing it. They always say, oh, you always get bad belly once on a Thailand trip. Well, we never have. Three times. We've been here for the best part of three months of our life, maybe a little bit longer than three months of our entire life, eating every day with that stuff in all different places around Thailand and Southeast Asia, never got bad belly, touch wood. Right, next question, Holly. Even though the Thai roads are rated one of the most dangerous in the world, as somebody who's driven on them, would you say that that's true? I hope this is picking you up. I, I, I assume it is. You, um, but yeah, so our Thai, just in case it's not, our Thai roads, uh, they're supposedly the da most dangerous in the world, or one of the most dangerous uh, roads in the world. Are Thai drivers bad? Is driving in Thailand bad? Let me tell you, I have done, it's got to be thousands of miles now, thousands of miles on a moped. I don't ride a moped in my home country, and I don't have a motorbike license, but I have come over to Thailand like many Western tourists do, um, with the wrong licenses. I've got my driver's license. No, it's not the right one, but it doesn't matter. They don't really care that much here. And I don't want to say that for facts because maybe they do, but, but from my experience, they don't really care. 
the people that rent you the scooters often don't even ask you if you've got a license and they don't want to see it and they don't care. You sign a thing to say it's your responsibility, blah, blah, blah. You, your travel insurance is invalid. If you have an accident here and you had to go to hospital and you was on a motorbike without a license, it would be invalid. Um, so with that caveat, and obviously it is illegal. So you, I have been pulled over by the police a couple of times, not on this trip, interestingly, but on the last trip or two, Chiang Mai, got pulled over a couple of times. You pay a small fine um, and then it's like a three-day pass. And you can just drive around. If you get pulled over again, you show them the, the receipt for the fine you pay. They don't go, all right, I'm impounding your bike or I'm taking your bike off you or you're going to prison. No, they just go, okay, no worries. You've paid your pass. So I see it as a little bit like a tourist tax. And, and I think it's a strength of Thailand. If they stop allowing that, I think that tourism will... Uh, decline steeply because part of the fun of coming to Thailand is getting yourself a scooter and riding around exploring on the Thai uh, roads. Now, just to answer the question directly, what Holly said, because I realise I've gone off on a tangent as I often do, I find Thai drivers to be some of the best in the world. Like, and if you disagree with me, then you haven't ridden or driven in Thailand. Simple as that. When it com when you compare it to like the UK, British drivers are ten times worse than the worst tire drivers. We just have a set of robust rules in the UK that keeps our drivers safe. So you must not undertake. You must not do this. You must not do that. We have a really re robust set of rules that kind of caters for the most crappiest shittest drivers in the uk and we've we mostly abide by that set of rules and it keeps us all safe in thailand they do what they want they drive up the wrong side of the road they do go up one way is the wrong way they put four people five people on a on a uh, motorbike they don't wear helmets and all that stuff and they they are way way better drivers than us i see the westerners come over here hire a motorbike weaving and swerving and uh, like acting like it's a computer game and you see them all covered in bandages and bruises and stuff because they fell off the ties you never see them have an accident you never see them smashing a motorbike up they are excellent drivers they are super aware and like vietnam they i can't comment on them as drivers but but like it's a total different situation they're just beep 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 there's a gap there i'm gonna get in it beep, 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 beep. and it kind of works for them but it's unnecessary in thailand they're excellent drivers the roads in my opinion are super safe we are the most dangerous things on our roads and if if the thai people wore helmets more then their roads would be safer simple as that um because you can't account for some car pulling out on you or something like that but generally speaking thai drivers are fantastic they are excellent and i've happily put my life in their hands on multiple occasions and uh very rare will you get a tire driver do something unexpected or or like wow that was dangerous almost non-existent you can and like i said i've driven thousands of miles around mountains like in busy intense cities tire drivers are excellent sorry long answer to the question but if you come to Thailand, get yourself a goddamn scooter. Get yourself an helmet. The helmets are too small here. So if you've got a massive head like me, bring one from the UK like I have. Um, and enjoy the scooter part of it. It's awesome. Like, it's so good. If you get a chance to backpack around Thailand on a scooter, do it. It will be one of the most bloody life-changing experiences you ever have. It's so good. Right, next question. Um, what's your favourite thing about the Thai people and their culture? What, these are good questions, by the way. What's my favourite thing about the Thai people and their culture? So the Thai people are generally warm, uh, welcoming, smiley, modest. They have high integrity. Um, they are honest. Did I say honest? I said modest. I don't know if I said honest. They're honest. They're trustworthy. Like, you think, you, you think anywhere else... Some of the things that happen, you're like, oh, I'm getting scammed here. This is going to be a scam. In Thailand, if you get scammed, 
like it's not impossible it's not unheard of but honestly i think it's super unlikely in situations where in other cities where you don't know them or other places you would definitely be getting scammed in thailand they're just honest decent trustworthy lovely people they've got warm hearts they're not all they're not all smiley you do go in a 7-eleven and get someone being a bit grumpy but they're not nasty they're just Maybe don't say hello and don't say thank you, but they're just like factory workers, essentially. People coming in all day, every day. Like So I, I don't blame them for being like that, but but they're so warm, they're so smiley, they're so friendly, um, and you'll have some amazing experiences chatting uh, with with the Thais. They're great people. Like last night, we was having a foot massage on Khao San Road in Bangkok, um, and I was joking with the masseurs that, me and Holly were brother and sister. And I was like, look at our eyes, look at our mouths, look at our noses. We are the same. We look the same. And and then I held her hand and I went to kiss her and all this stuff. And they were laughing their heads off. Like, they're really lovely people. I prefer Thai people. Uh, I prefer Thai people to, to, to most Brits. I've got to be honest, I just do. They're so lovely. And I think you'll find the same if you come over here. The egoless modest sorry i got chicken in my, chicken in my teeth <laughs> egoless modest lovely lovely genuinely lovely people and i am i am envious over their often seemingly more simplistic uh lifestyle envious like envious that we're so wrapped up in what we're wrapped up in in the west and and they've just got such a lovely way of living and a lovely way of life and i love thai people i think they're great next question um, okay, what itinerary would you recommend for someone on their first trip around Thailand? So where would you recommend that they went? Where would I recommend for a backpacking trip, essentially, or, or somebody that's come in multiple places in Thailand? Um, for the first trip, how long is the trip? A month. A month, right. A month, I would say, I won't say how long in each, but I would say you definitely want to do Bangkok. You will do Bangkok. You'll probably fly into Bangkok. You definitely want to do Bangkok. You definitely want to do Chiang Mai. Uh, you definitely want to do Koh Samui. You definitely want to do Koh Phang An. I would do Ao Nang. I actually re really liked Ao Nang this time. You want to do PP, or but albeit you're not going to want to stay there long because we make a mess of it a bit, but it's still definitely worth going to. PP's awesome. Uh, Rayleigh Beach, um, that's definitely worth going to. If you're that way inclined, Kasok National Park is awesome and for a month that would probably do you uh there are some other bits and bobs you could throw in there as well but i think that would be enough for you to stay in certain places for a decent amount of time you see the best bits avoid the worst bits like for example phuket the biggest island here i don't like it i just don't like it and everything that i just said about the ties when we go there it doesn't feel the same it feels a little bit hustly and bustly um and a little bit like I don't know, maybe I'm just thinking of one taxi driver that was like a nut job and I thought he was going to kill somebody, like kill somebody. We were in his taxi. Um, but Phuket, we've been a couple of times. I would skip it and it's one of the most popular destinations where a lot of people come to Thailand, but I would skip it. Samui, Pangan, they're great islands. PP, uh, Rayleigh Beach, Ao Nang, Chiang Mai, Bangkok. And then there's other bits, Kaosok National Park, there's other bits you could do. We did Koh Lanta this time. Koh Lanta, really quiet, really sleepy. I did a vlog on it, um, but I really enjoyed it. And it's one of the highlights of my trip. Would I recommend it to somebody wanting to experience Thailand? Probably not, not for the first time. But am I glad we went? Absolutely, I really enjoyed it. Um, oh, Koh Chang, Koh Chang. Koh Chang's awesome as well. Not likely to go there very often, but Koh Chang's awesome. Uh, it's just not easily connected. We came out of Cambodia and went to Koh Chang, which is the only reason I went, but I'm really glad we did. Last trip, we spent a week in Koh Chang and it was awesome. But yeah, so that's my itinerary. Some combination of that. Sounds good. Great question. Next one. Um, where is your favourite place in Thailand to go on holiday? So if you were just going to one place, where would you choose to go if if, you were just taking one flight. If I was taking one flight and going to Thailand for a holiday, it would have to be Koh Samui. But you knew I'd say that, didn't you? It would have to be Koh Samui, <laughs> for sure. Uh, you'd have to be careful about where you stayed because 
Chueng Beach is amazing, but Chueng at night time is a little bit rowdy in places, uh, a little bit for the younger crowd. We prefer Lamai, but I'm tempted not to say that because everybody will flood to Lamai. Oh, not everybody. It's not <laughs> like this. Ten, tens of thousands of people are going to see this. So yeah, I would personally stay in Lamai, get yourself a um, a motorbike, and be willing to go over to Chueng and around the rest of the island, like the Fisherman's Village and all that stuff, um, as and when uh, on a regular basis. And I think you'll, I think Samui, Samui. Chueng Beach is awesome. Uh, Lamai is lovely in the evening, but there's more to it than that. Like so, for sure, Samui. Next question. What three tips would you give to people to get on well in Thailand? What three tips would I give to for, to people to get on well in Thailand? This is a difficult one. Thank <laughs> you look at smile. This is lovely. So I would um, I would probably say learn how to say Sawadee Karp or Karp or, or Sawadee Kar and Kupkun Karp and Kupkun Karp. That's hello and thank you. That's basically all you need here. I'd like to say bye-bye, but you don't need anything other than those things. English is widely spoken here. You won't struggle. Um, anybody that don't speak English, they'll end up giving you the phone and there's a translator app on there. You can just use that. Uh, so, yeah, learn Swadi Kang, uh, Kupkun Karp. What was the question again? What three tips would you give to people to get on well in Thailand? Uh, th another t so another tip. God, I could have done with just one tip here. Let's let me <laughs> think if I can think of another one without having to edit. Um, another tip. Another tip would be, if you're backpacking, don't overload your bag. Like less is more because you, you're gonna want to buy stuff out here. Ollie Ollie's can't find jeans that fit her in the west anywhere so like because she's a bloody short ass and she's like three and a half foot she can't find no jeans but over here like just straight off the shelf the jeans fit her so like like perfectly no having to take things up no wearing them a bit funny or anything like that so it's like she is asian size and it's like they're you you're, you're gonna probably want to buy a load of stuff it's super cheap so you're gonna want to probably buy some tops and some Jesus, I don't know. You're probably going to want to take stuff back for you, um, with you. So don't overpack. Underpack, right? And you will overpack, but but just don't. Or remember that I told you not to. And I did think of a really uh, good last tip, but it just slid out my head. Uh, what was it about? I don't know, but get a motorbike. Enjoy the street food. Um, and that was it. Don't book where you're going before you get here. In my opinion, and I know Ollie's like, oh, oh, oh. You know, I prefer to do that, but I think a lot of people find that process very, very stressful. Yes, um, yeah, maybe, maybe you find that stressful, but if, if there's any way you can do it, you can do it in Thailand. Book yourself a flight here, and if you want, book yourself a flight back, but we didn't. We booked us, us a flight here, and that was it. And we booked ourselves a flight to Vietnam and we figured it out. Mm. Explore, enjoy it, keep it open-ended. Don't book it all up front. Don't have this massive itinerary planned out. Book yourself a flight. Make sure you've got a few thousand pound in the bank and bloody go for it. And it's great. Be willing to get those scooters and explore those mountains or those beach roads or, or whatever and just see where you end up. And if you if you don't like a place, go, you know what? We've booked for three nights. Uh, we'll move on. Or, or we like it here, we'll stay for longer. We'll book another three nights somewhere else, just down the road or whatever. Like, just make it an exploration. Yeah. Is that it? Or we've got one more? One more. Okay. Um, if you were to live in Thailand, where would you choose? If I was to live in Thailand, where would I choose? Uh, I think a lot of people would like Bangkok. Uh, I personally, it's not my favourite. I come here for Ollie. Um, but I think the longer you spent in Bangkok, the more you'd probably fall in love with it. But um, the answer is Chiang Mai. If I was to live anywhere, it would be Chiang Mai. It's that perfect blend of city villagey vibe whereby it doesn't feel massive like Bangkok whereby you're never going to see the same person twice it kind of feels small and intimate but but 
uh, has lots of amenities. It's got malls. It's got bars and restaurants and massage places and just it's really nice. The one thing Chiang Mai doesn't have uh, is a beach. So that but but knowing how cheap and regular internal flights are here and how easy they are to take, you could live in Chiang Mai and you could just visit Koh Samui or wherever, you know, for a little bit of a a, a, a beach break every now and again. So yeah, I'd love to say I would live in Koh Samui, but it doesn't have all of the amenities of Chiang Mai. So Chiang Mai is where I would probably live if I was to live here. I, li I don't think I'd stay forever in Chiang Mai, but if you said you got to choose somewhere to live for a year or two, uh, yeah, I'd love to live in Chiang Mai. That it? Any more questions? I had one more, but you've kind of already covered it in your answering your other questions. Um, what would you recommend everyone do when they come to Thailand? Okay, so, so I probably kind of already covered it. it. Right, thanks for that. They were great, great questions. And hopefully you enjoyed that uh, video. If you've got any more questions on my thoughts of Thailand, I've been there th three times now and spent the best part of three months of my life bumming around Thailand, um, then let me know in the comments down below and I'll probably answer them either in the comments down below or on a follow-up video if you want me to. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, I'm sure I'm going to vlog a little bit more, so this won't be the end of the vlog, but I'll see you where we go next. So we asked the taxi driver to bring us to Central Plaza, because that's where Ollie wants to go, some shops. He brought us to Central World, wrong place. <laughs> okay, we're going to go in anyway. God bless him. Here we are again. turn the music off it's a five minutes five minutes I think, I'm guessing they're not allowed to play music after 12 and these are here to check it and enforce it and then when they're gone the music will come back on again I'm guessing you see the entire street is so loud and crazy and it's I can hear it slightly going down in volume and like clockwork the music starts again as the police roll through they know what's going on that's, that's the game. Turn it off as they roll through, turn it back on as they roll out. So this tuk-tuk guy has said, do you want music? You can, we can connect to his phone, uh, to connect our phone. So Ollie's looking for some music. This will be our last tuk-tuk and this is the end of the vlog. Fly home tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up and all that. See you then. an hour we've got to go to uh, the plane so I've come in this shop in Bangkok uh, to get a, a travel pillow it's either this grey one or this cool dinosaur one but honestly I don't even understand travel pillars or what they're meant to do Ollie's bloody buying god knows what what's them? Pants. darling we ain't got a suitcase how are you going to bring them back? Which one? Oh, he's not having all three. I don't know. But anyway, can somebody explain how these are meant to work? There's a grey one that doesn't look ridiculous. I feel like the cool dinosaur one is cooler. So, I hate to say it, but this is the best one. I don't really understand what they do. But I think this is doing more than the others. I mean, it is definitely threat like strangling me, but maybe if I nestle down in it. I don't know, I'm getting this one. Cool dinosaur. So I'm getting cool dinosaur lovely and rabbit. Holly's getting lovely rabbit. And a panda. And a panda for everything. Hello everybody.
Bye bye Bangkok. It's been another good one. We'll see you another time. Let's see how Holly just walks under this. Like, this isn't even the worst. In one of these 7-Elevens, my head literally would smash the bulb. All right, let me duck under it. Ready? How much ice? Oh, check this one out. 